everyone, welcome to the CNBC TV 18's Mumbai Newsroom. I'm Sonal Bhutra and with me is Pavitra Parekh. You're watching Mutual Fund Corner here. And uh, hey Pavitra, today we are going to be talking about gold ETFs. We have all been talking about how gold prices are creating new records every day in the last couple of weeks. And you know, if we talk about gold ETFs, this time around, if we talk about the month of November, they did see an outflow of 195 crore rupees. This compares with the October inflow figure of 147 crore rupees. If you look at the chart, it's been so volatile so far. The high that we saw was 1100 crore rupees in the month of April. Since then, it has been dwindling from flows in the positive to negative inflows as well. Uh, in fact, global ETFs saw a net outflow of $3 billion in October as well. Uh, so what drove this volatility? What is the outlook here? A lot to discuss. Clearly, we have a lot to discuss and we have a good guest joining us to take us through all of our questions. So to discuss all of these topics, we have Anupav Srivastava, partner and senior fund manager at Infinity Alternatives, who's joining us now. Anupav, good morning and thank you very much for joining us and taking out the time today. You know, my first question has to be on this exactly what Sonal was talking about. What do you think has led to this kind of massive volatility in the flows that we've seen in this category? And uh, how do you think it's likely to fare from here as well? Uh, thank you for <clears throat> having me over, Pavitra. Pardon the throat. Is all the Mumbai pollution getting to us all? Um, so, a uh, couple of interesting things out here. We've seen uh, global flows going all over the place. We've seen global gold prices going all over the place. And one big factor that is responsible for all of this uh, is actually the US dollar strengthening. And, and if you look at it as a commodity, it has, uh, I mean, there's the usual flight to safety requirements and all of those kind of things. Uh, but the first big factor that has moved gold prices is the US dollar strengthening. So when the gold demand doesn't change and the dollar strengthens, gold demand will fall because in dollar terms it becomes more expensive. And that's what everybody is tracking. All the other currencies that are big buyers of gold, for example, uh, the Indian rupee uh, they will, will have some impact. The Chinese yuan will have some impact. Right. The other factor that we've not really uh, taken into account uh, when we analyze all of this, see, over the last several years, uh, central banks started to get huge amounts of, uh, you know, uh, uh, liquidity into the system. Now, when people were expecting liquidity to dry out, all kinds of things to happen, but, but that entire scenario did not play out. So what we again saw was there was a spike in 2020 and then again, the whole demand petered out. So <clears throat> that is the other thing. The one minor uh, impact was also uh, the supply chain disruptions, uh, which did have some impact during the lockdown time in gold supplies being disrupted. But I think that's by and large over. We don't really have a problem on that front. So if you were to look at this huge swing that has happened, um, this uncertainties are not over. Inflation is still a problem. The Ukraine war, war is, uh, is going nowhere. I mean, there's no sight to the, the end to that. You will see oil disruptions going on. So all of these things are contributing to uh, investors going into and out of gold uh, as and when uh, you know they, they, they think that there is a problem. And at the time, they think that, okay, fine, inflation is over, so kind of let's get back into uh, growth stocks and so on. Okay, that is interesting. So in that case, uh, could you tell us, uh, yes, you told us what is driving the way gold prices are moving globally in India. But what is the general outlook on how good this would be as an asset, considering the macro headwinds that you just spoke about? Well, so, uh, see, we're heading to a more certain disruption, uh, if, if I were to use that word, uh, in 2023. You know, I've written about it a, a little bit in one of the newspapers. Uh, we are looking at a recession in, uh, in, in the US or Europe, if it's not already there. We are looking at uh, certain uh, disruptions in terms of uh, consumption. We are looking at inflation kind of getting a little bit entrenched. And all of these things, in my view, are a positive for gold. So 2023 might be a, a year where we, we may not see a big a jump in gold prices, but we will see demand uh, strengthening and uh, gold getting back to its uh, usual uh, you know, demand patterns. Could be seasonal, could be the, the regular stuff that uh, you know, people buy for uh, hedging their uh, equity investments and so on. Unfortunately, uh, global flare-ups are still a problem. So where this Ukraine war takes us, what Russia does, what Ukraine does, what the rest of the Western world does, will have an impact on gold because that again becomes the de facto global currency when your financial systems break down. 
All right, that point is definitely taken and that is how gold could move from here. Anubhav, the next question I want to ask you is, what do you see as the key difference between sovereign gold bonds as well as investing in gold ETFs? Um, also, if you know, for the benefit of our viewers, if you could take us through the minimum investment amount, the lock-in period, because, you know, these could be some important factors which would uh, help, help any investor choose which one is a better fit for them. Perfect. So let me first talk about the lock-in period. There is no lock-in period as such. Um, I mean, we, when we talk about lock-in periods, we talk about mutual funds and those kind of things. Neither of these things has a lock-in period. You can get out of gold bond, uh, sovereign gold bonds or gold ETFs whenever you choose to. But that's where these similarities end. See, sovereign gold bonds do not have any gold in the back. It's basically a promissory note from government of India, which says that you we borrowed uh, notionally XYZ grams of gold from you, and we will give you an interest on it. And at uh, seven years down the line, we will return this money to you, not gold, uh, along with the interest. Uh, so that's that's how you can you can buy it as an as low as one gram or one gram equivalent worth of bonds, and you can go as high as forty kilos. That's the maximum allowed uh, for uh, institutions and so on, the HUF type people. Sorry, HUF is twenty kgs, and then uh, you got the forty kg limit uh, above that. Uh, in ETFs, you can buy a single unit. Uh, okay. I think the, the unit in gold bees is something like uh, 40 rupees. So that's the minimum that you can do there. Um, the other difference is that when you uh, exit a gold bond, right, which means basically you sell it on the secondary market, uh, that's when your capital gains tax is applicable as per, um, you know, gold rates. Now, when you exit on, uh, at, at maturity, which means the government returns the money to you, the big advantage is that you do not have to pay any capital gains tax on that. Okay, all right. So, you know, we've been talking about how it compares with uh, sovereign gold bonds, but uh, uh, tell us how does it compare with digital gold? There's been so much talk around that. Uh, what is the difference? And is it an asset which is, uh, of course, riskier than how we approach gold ETFs or sovereign gold bonds? Yes, so <clears throat> while sovereign gold bonds are regulated, right? I mean, they're technically issued by RBI and, you know, the government of India backing and all of that. Uh, gold ETFs uh, have physical gold lying in the vaults, right? So there are numbered bars that correspond to the units that are issued out there and that are trading. Digital gold, on the other hand, is the whims and fancies of uh, the issuer or the seller. Actually, I won't call them the issuer, they're the seller. Now, if you look at the Tanishq website, which is one of the most popular digital gold uh, um, you know, issuers in the country, which is called Safe Gold. Now, those guys clearly say that A, there is no delivery. We will hold the gold for you. This entire scheme is not regulated either by the RBI or by SEBI. So the first question that you have to ask yourself when you invest in digital gold is that this is not regulated. The risk is entirely on the person that is selling it to you. It's, it's like going and buying a commodity but the guy says, no, no, you, here's the commodity, you own it, but I'll hold on to it for you. So that's the big difference. I mean, uh, the question that I ask is, why would you not take delivery of the gold if you've already paid for it? So that's the huge difference. Second thing is, <clears throat> there is no trading. Uh, sovereign gold bonds, you can go and sell in the market. Uh, yes, uh, there'll be a capital gains and all of that. Uh, gold ETFs, you can go sell in the market. This, you need to either take physical delivery or sell it back to the uh you know the, the seller that you bought it from at the prices that are prevailing uh subject to you know whatever charges etc the seller so in my view digital gold uh is is there it's been issued by some so uh, so to speak reputed companies and all but it is not regulated you are carrying a huge counterparty risk which means that if the issuer goes under there is no mechanism defined as of now what happens to your gold so they have they say they have something called gold trustees and all we don't know who they are we don't know what their rules they're governed by and and who do they really take instructions from because when you talk about a trustee it literally means there has to be a trust in the picture i don't think digital gold is held in a trust like a gold etf so uh, digital gold is there a lot of issuers are selling it these are also typically market makers in gold etfs um, but uh, so that's the i mean that's broadly the difference between Gold bonds, gold ETFs, and the so-called digital gold. All right, got it. You definitely don't uh, sound like you are. You have any kind of tolerance for the digital gold. But you know that's an important point to put on the table that these are not regulated, and that risk needs to be understood as well. Um, Anubhav, take us through what you think are the key benefits of investing in gold ETFs. Right, great. So, 
first of all, technically, and this is again technically, you could get hold of that gold that is lying there, right? In I mean, they would typically hold it in 995 purity kilobars. Uh, but uh, I mean, we used to have, when I was uh, running a gold ETF, we used to even deliver things like 10 grams and 50 grams and 100 grams and all that. Uh, but uh, so technically you can, so there's a physical asset backing the units that are out there, right? So that's, that's the first thing. That means it will very, very closely track the price of gold if the demand for units goes up or down some uh, authorized participant at the back end will close out that gap and the and the gold prices will typically fall now this is uh, subject to international prices of gold it's subject to domestic demand and supply so uh, you will have a good exposure to gold most importantly sovereign gold bonds are highly illiquid right because mostly people uh, will sell those when they're in desperate need otherwise people are quite happy to hold on to them so gold ETFs are very liquid. Now, what this means is that when you uh, want to sell it, and the reason you'd want to sell it is for purposes of uh, hedging, you want to buy it for purposes of hedging, you want to uh, keep it as a part of your strategic asset allocation and all of those things, you need a highly liquid security, right? So akin to uh, you know buying uh, Nifty Ps or something like that, uh, gold ETFs will be very good for you uh, when you have it as a part of your asset allocation. When you have a part of your asset allocation, you should be able to uh, buy or sell it on a dime to rebalance your portfolios. So that's where it helps. Um, the, that's the big benefit of uh, buying gold ETS. You don't really need uh, too much uh, in terms of uh, knowledge about that. You need to know the price of gold and you need to know the indicative NAV of the uh, ETF that you're buying and you're good to go. Okay. All right. So, Anwar, we'll do one thing. Uh, we have to continue this interesting conversation, but we'll get into a quick commercial break. And on the other side, we'll continue talking about gold ETFs in a lot more. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Mutual Fund Corner and we have with us Anubhav Srivastava and today we're talking all about gold ETFs. What we haven't spoken about yet, Anubhav, is the tax angle, right? So if you could just take our viewers through what the tax consideration is when you sell the gold ETFs and what are the taxes that you do have to pay when you decide to let go of your ETFs? Right. One of the certain things in life is taxation. So uh, gold falls under this, gold ETFs fall under this other than equity taxation. Uh, which means that you will get your 20% uh, long-term after three years. Um, that's the short answer, that we do need to pay taxes based on uh, short-term selling and buying gold ETFs will uh, eventually end up uh, uh, with your gains being added to your income. So you will pay the marginal tax rate there. Uh, having said that, typically you would want to hold uh, gold uh, ETFs for a much longer period. So... In, uh, on the balance, it won't really make too much of a difference, but yes, the taxation is there. Uh, what is interesting to point out out here is that when you have large gold holdings, uh, then wealth tax on gold ETF holdings is not applicable. Um, but if you have physical gold, you will pay a wealth tax on it beyond, uh, I guess, uh, 30 kilos. That's the number. So that, I mean, gold ETFs are pretty straightforward taxation. If you hold debt funds, if you hold uh, bond uh, ETFs, um, it, then you will effectively have the exact same taxation uh, in gold ETFs. No one can escape taxes, really, can they? So, of course, that's the taxation angle uh, to gold ETFs. Anubhav, can you tell us, we've been talking about the benefits of gold ETFs, comparing it with other asset classes as well. According to you, who should not invest in a gold ETF? <clears throat> right. So gold ETFs, uh, as the name suggests, are exchange traded funds. If you have a problem trading on the exchange, stay away from it. Because you will need to understand what are the drivers of prices of gold, which means that uh, you should know what the price is right now. That the specific gold ETF that you're buying, uh, uh, is that the is it well priced? Is it running at a premium? Is it running at a discount? Uh, so the first thing is that i mean if you're if you're looking at uh, you know uh, problems with trading then you should not second the second issue is uh, if you want to hold gold for a very very long time and you're okay with government of india risk which means that you're okay with investing in uh, sovereign gold bonds for 7 years and you have absolutely no scenario in which case you want to redeem that then, I mean, there's no point in holding gold ETFs. You'd rather go and hold that bond, which is the equivalent of buying an RBI bond, 
and you just sit on it for seven years, you'll get your money back at that point in time. If you want to flip it into physical gold, uh, you can do that. So, um, uh, you know, those hold to maturity types for sovereign gold bonds, if you have a problem with it, if you're a very, very small investor and you're not comfortable with trading anything, right, then you're better off actually buying those index funds uh, than, you know, get get started with things that you uh, would be trading on the on the exchange and you're not really geared up for that. So these are the only scenarios in which case gold ETFs might not be good for you. All right. So um, I guess a very few, very small percentage of people would fit into that category where, you know, gold ETFs just don't make sense. But uh, since we are talking about ETFs over here, do you think that these are actually better as long-term investments or do you think they can also be used just, you know, when you're trying to hedge the current environment? Can it be used in that uh, environment as well? Or do you think these work much better if you put them to play for a long time? I think uh, <clears throat> the first, uh, it is the great feature is that you can trade it, right? So uh, if you're trading gold ETFs uh, for short term, for long term, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think uh, hedging is uh, important. Uh, you can use it for tactical allocations. You can do all of those things with this. So uh, purpose of gold uh, ETFs could be uh, as a hedge. It could be a strategic allocation. It could even be a tactical play. So that's not really that much of a problem. Okay. So uh, that is about whether it's a long-term investment or whether it's a hedging bet as well. Uh, are gold ETFs actually seeing much traction, especially in a country like ours, because we do see people either buying or preferring physical gold or silver versus other forms of gold investments. Has the traction or the flow here really picked up in terms of volumes at least? Well, so I've been tracking these for, you know, a decade and change. Uh, and uh, what I have seen is that there is a significant growth over a longer period of time in gold ETFs, right? Um, but uh, I think we will never see such a massive uh, growth in gold ETFs like you have seen in, you know, let's say Nifty ETFs or uh, Sensex ETFs or a bunch of other ETFs because in India, traditionally, we buy gold for reasons other than invest investment, right? Now, without getting into the historical reasons for it, the 600 tons or thereabouts, or maybe even larger numbers of time, I mean, the average that we consume, uh, basically import in a year, there's barely 45, 50, max 100 tons that could end up in, in ETFs, right? Because the larger demand for gold ETFs comes from um, your uh, asset allocation. It comes from hedging. It comes from even longer term exposure for people that do not want to uh, stock the gold. All right, we got that. And um, just a few more questions, Anubhav, on this. Uh, you've explained the case for investing into gold ETFs, but how does one really go about choosing which gold ETF, which fund manager they choose? Because, you know, at the end of the day, they're all tracking the gold price as well, right? So how do you choose which ETF to invest into and also uh, which have been the best performing gold ETF so far? Right. So <clears throat> uh, all gold fund managers are equal, but clearly some are more equal than the others. <laughs> I think... Uh, uh, Largely, the fund manager does not have a massive role to play out here because large portions of the creation are actually done by market makers who are, uh, you know, basically gold traders, gold consumers themselves. So what they will do is they'll essentially, I mean, just to get into the mechanics of it, they'll deliver gold bars uh, to the uh, asset management company, maybe deliver some cash, uh, and then they will get units in exchange. Right. So uh, this is important to understand uh, because this is this is then what leads to, uh, you know, the, the difference in uh, different gold ETFs. Now, when you have uh, your, uh, uh, you know, when you're looking at choosing the gold ETF, the first thing, therefore, that is very important is size, which means that there are more people that are uh, market making at the back end um, to help you uh, track the price that is very close to uh, what you should be buying or selling at. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing is uh, tracking error. You will get published tracking errors. You can look at that and they'll tell you exactly what these are. Some of the gold ETFs that are uh, out there, I guess gold bees was the first one that was filed. Um, they still have a great track record of managing it well, uh, which is from Nippon now. Uh, then you have HDFC, you've got a couple of others. They're okay. 
Okay, they are okay. Anubhav, we had more questions, but uh, sadly we have run out of time today, but it definitely was a masterclass on gold ETFs. When should we, we invest? How much can one invest? And a lot more as well. Thanks a lot for joining us today and explaining all that to us. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Mutual Fund Corner. Stay tuned. Closing bell will come to take you through the last hour of trading action.